So today we are going to discuss uh, about the uh, strip line, which is our module third, and uh, the parameters so what are there with respect to strip line, and what is strip line that we are going to discuss in today's session. Okay. So here, as I have drawn a few block diagrams and the radiation pattern of the strip line. But before discussing the strip line, let me remind or recall all the parameters what we have discussed for our uh, transmission line. Because the strip line is also uh, can be used for transmission line purpose. In transmission line, basically, it can be used for the communication purpose as well as for the uh, voltage transmission also but the thing is that when you are going to use for communication purpose for the transmission line the energize or the potential what we are going to provide to the transmission line is very very negligible so that your wavelength is also going to be less but frequency is going to be high because we are going to communicate with the help of frequency okay we are transferring the information in the form of frequency modulation or frequency transmission and with the small amount of potential if you are going to transmit the heavy voltage your frequency definitely it will reduce because wavelength is going to increase and due to which potential is also going to increase but this is one line which is a power which is a type of a transmission line basically which operate at a low potential and basically used for our communication purpose these strip lines are basically used as a antenna okay these are used as an antenna transmitting antenna this will radiate the electromagnetic wave that we will discuss today okay and these microstrip lines are basically available in our cellular phone in which with the less amount of potential the maximum information can be delivered in the form of electromagnetic waves the radiations okay with less amount of wavelength but with a high amount of frequency it can be operated in megahertz because our systems or our cellular phones are operating at a certain megahertz but microwaves are operating at a gigahertz okay and these devices are basically used for communication purpose with less amount of potential maximum information can be delivered at the receiving end it can transmit the signal as well as receive the signal okay but this transmission line as i have discussed the transmission lines are basically operate in a tem mode transverse electromagnetic mode because both the electric field and magnetic field are going to to help to deliver our information while using the transmission line but the same characteristics is not followed by this micro strip line what are the parameters we have discussed in our transmission line first the characteristics of a transmission line the characteristics impedance of a transmission line depends upon the lumped parameter of a transmission line we have seen one uh, uh, coaxial uh, transmission line we have seen two wire line we have seen three wire line and depend upon the characteristics we have identified the rlgc parameter and the characteristics impedance and uh, other parameter like propagation constant phase constant attenuation constant it depends upon the mediums similarly wavelength also we have calculated we have calculated phase velocity okay and also we have calculated the electrical displacement the same parameter we are going to identify for this strip line with the help of certain consideration and moreover the strip lines are not operating in tem mode rather than these are operating in quasi tem mode it is having the characteristics of tem but it is not guided in transmission line both electromagnetic fields are guided within a, suppose if i will consider a coaxial cable it is having a core and outside it is a cladding the informations are delivered with the help of core electric fields and magnetic field both are guided by the medium okay here also in this sort of structure what happens first substrate we are going to identify substrate means it is a dielectric material okay the construction of this strip line are basically it is a sandwich of two metal with a dielectric constant like a parallel plate capacitor the working principle of the strip line is based on the parallel plate capacitor okay so what happens first the ground plane is a metallic plane okay which is very thin above which the dielectric medium is kept at a certain thickness okay why that thickness is that that i will discuss at a certain thickness and then a small metallic plate as you can see 
This is the ground plane which is a conductive ground plane above which a dielectric substrate is there in which the electric medium is epsilon r and above which a small metallic plate, a very thin metallic plate will be placed above the dielectric substrate. Now this whole construction is called as a microstripling. Okay? So here what happens, there are three basic layers are there. First, metallic, thin metallic plate will be there with a limited width. Second layer is our substrate and third layer is our ground plate which is also a metal. So when I am going to energize this, what I will do, this ground plane act as a ground. Okay, that means negative potential is provided to this and positive potential is provided to this metallic plate. Now when the two plates, uh, suppose this is a parallel plate capacitor, okay, this plate is connected to positive terminal and this plate is connected to the negative terminal and the medium between this plate is called as our dielectric medium epsilon r. So how we have identified the capacitance? Epsilon naught A divided by D. D is the spacing between the parallel plate, A is the cross section of the parallel plate and C we have identified. And also we can identify by Q by V naught. So charge per potential C is equal to Q by V, V naught is the applied potential and Q is the distributed charge on this particular plate. So these are the certain relation which we are going to use once again for this microstrip line. So in this microstrip line, it is having certain parameters. Okay. In our transmission line, we have seen it depends upon length. So resistance per unit length, capacitance per unit length, inductance per unit length and the conductance per unit length. These are the lumped parameters. These are the basic parameters through which we have derived all those uh, features for a particular line like characteristics impedance, velocity, phase velocity, group velocity, then wavelength, then propagation constant, phase constant, attenuation constant and all. Okay. Similarly, we are going to identify some parameters for the microstrip line. Here, basically two parameters we are going to determine. First, the effective dielectric permittivity because here there are three mediums are there. First, metallic second it is a dielectric value third is also a metallic so if i will combine it its ref uh, relative permittivity will change so that epsilon r value is going to change with some other values that we will derive second we are going to derive the characteristics impedance for this microstrip line for the consideration of all these things for the determination of characteristics impedance for the determination of the uh, relative uh, uh, permittivity of that uh, dielectric substrate with respect to this conductive medium, what uh, are the other features which will help to determine these two components. Okay, what are the features? The dimensions. The dimension of microstrip line. So here basically we have three dimensions. One, the thickness or the width of this metallic plate. As you can see, I have written a small w. So small w is the width of the metallic plate. And T is the thickness of the metallic plate. This is the thickness of the metallic plate which is placed above the dielectric substrate. Next comes to this dielectric medium. The dielectric medium having a thickness H. Or you can say height of the substrate you can say as H. Okay. And the dielectric substrate is having its permittivity is epsilon R. Which is not a air medium. It is having a dielectric value. If it is air medium, epsilon r value can put as 1. But here it is not equal to 1. Next, last level is what? It is a ground plane. Ground plane is also a very thin layer which is placed below the substrate which act as a ground plane, which act as a supportive plate, this negative plate. So negatively charge will be in this particular plate, positive charge will be in the above plate. So your radiation will come from positive to negative. So till this, I think it is okay. Now, if I am giving some sort of potential, suppose this metallic plate is connected to the positive terminal and this ground plane is connected to the negative terminal. So what will happen? In this dielectric medium, the charge will be distributed. Positive charge will be distributed in this parallel plate and negative charge is distributed which is connected to the negative potential. And we know that if there is a 
positive charge and there is a negative charge the electric field will generate from positive charge and ends at negative charge like this so your electric fields are moving radially outwards like this so these are the electric fields so electric fields will generate from the positive charge plate terminate at the negative charge plate so as you can see these are the electric fields which are moving like this in red color okay so these are the electric field which are generated from the metallic thin metallic plate and due to the flow of charge the current will generate and if the current flows your magnetic field is also going to generate so here you can see the black lines are called as our magnetic fields so in this the electric field and magnetic field both are there so that means it should satisfy TEO mode but it is not satisfying TEO mode but rather than it is a quasi TEO mode it is having the property of TEO okay it is a quasi in nature due to the inhomogeneous structure of this particular waveguide okay so it is an inhomogeneous structure first air medium is there then metallic medium then dielectric medium and again some metallic medium is available okay so here some features are there through which you can analyze the radiation pattern for this microstrip line so electric field will be generated from this plate and terminated in the ground plane because ground is a negative negative part and the positive charge due to the positive charge which is distributed above this metallic the electric fields are moving out and it will terminate in the negative plate and due to the flow of current in this metallic plate in above metallic plate the magnetic field will generate circularly if the current is moving in this direction you have to check magnetic field direction so it will move in anti clockwise direction if the current is moving in this then the magnetic field will be in a clockwise direction so that depends upon the assumption in which particular direction you are considering the flow of current okay now here three things are there one width of the strip second thickness of the strip metallic strip then height of the dielectric substrate and the width of the ground plane w so there are four parameters small t small w capital w and small h okay so here i have written capital w is width of the device width of the device means this one okay which must be very very greater than h and which must be very very greater than the width of the metallic plate width of the metallic plate so here i have written w is the width of the device layer small w is the width of the metallic plate h is the height of the substrate so this is the height of the substrate and the conditions are what your width of this ground plane must be very very greater than high with respect to the height of the substrate similarly width of this plane must be very very greater than width of this metallic plate so these are the two condition must be satisfied for a microstrip line okay so using these two then why this it is a q uh, quasi tm okay due to the homogeneous structure in homogeneous structure of this particular microstrip line due to the field between two guided media the microstrip does not support the tem wave does not support tem wave for example in two wire transmission line the electric field and magnetic field both are propagating but it is not guided it is open okay so it satisfy the tem property but since here there are two wave guides are there what are the wave guides one this metallic plate and one this metallic plate so whatever the waves are going to analyze within these two particular layer in the dielectric medium we can analyze the fields electric field and magnetic field so it is guided by two wave guides okay it is guided by two wave guides so it satisfy it is having both electric field and magnetic field but it is a quasi in nature means it should satis it will satisfy tem but it is not tem so it is a quasi tem mode it will have the properties of a uh, this uh, transverse electromagnetic mode okay depend upon the analysis so this is the basic structure and basic explanation for our tem mode now we are going to uh, form the relations for characteristics impedance of this transmission line and the effective uh, relative permittivity for the complete medium and how it depends upon this w by h always remember that in our waveguides 
this W and H for the microstrip line waveguide I am telling. This is W by H plays a vital role. If the W by H ratio uh, depend upon the variation of W by H ratio, your characteristics impedance will change. Your relative uh, permittivity of the medium is also going to change. That we will see now. Okay. Okay. So here I have written few equations so that we can cover the uh, part more faster way. So we, here we have to calculate effective dielectric constant and one is characteristic impedance. Okay. So this effective dielectric constant we can write epsilon suffix Re that is called as a relative effective permittivity. Why it is relative? Because there are three different mediums are there. First is conductor, then substrate, then conductor. And above the conductor air medium is also there. Okay. So here you can see I have written epsilon naught is for air medium and epsilon R is for the substrate medium in which fields are available. In air medium also fields are available but what is the total or the relative permittivity of this whole system that we are going to calculate. Now what is the steps behind that let us see. So first of all I have considered let us consider the metallic plate through which the electric fields are moving out and terminated in the ground plane. Okay? How the electric fields are generated? Due to the presence of charge. What is the charge? When the potential is provided to this metallic plate, depend upon the nature of potential, whether it is a positive potential or whether it is a negative potential. Basically here we have provided the positive potential. If the positive potential is provided, then the charge will be distributed throughout the metallic plate. If the charge is distributed throughout the metallic plate, above in this metallic plate, with respect to the ground plane, it can form a capacitor. Okay? Then we can easily determine the capacitance as I have shown that Q is equals to epsilon A by D. A is the cross section of the plate. D is the space between the plate. Here the space between the plate is H. Okay? Here the height is H. Okay? So this is the space. And what is epsilon? Epsilon is the relative permittivity. Epsilon will depend upon epsilon r into epsilon naught, depend upon the air medium or dielectric medium. But as a whole, it must satisfy the relative effective permittivity that we are going to discuss now. So as you can see, here I have written Q by V naught. Q by V naught is basically identified for the capacitance for the air medium means at this particular point because here I have considered epsilon r value is 1. So epsilon r value is 1. Next, in order to determine the characteristics impedance, in order to determine the other parameter, it should satisfy the some transverse mode. As I have discussed, due to the inhomogeneous structure of this microstrip line, it is a quasi TEM. Quasi TEM means it will satisfy the property of TEM. So in transmission line, which is operating in a tra transverse electric mode, which depends upon LC is equals to mu into epsilon. LC is equals to mu into epsilon means resonating circuit because the transmission line act as a resonator also. Okay, So that LC tuned circuit, LC is equals to mu epsilon, what is the condition for the transmission line we have seen. Same condition we are going to use here, but with respect to the different medium. Let us see. So here I have used the transmission line is now TEM structure. If it is TEM structure, it should satisfy L into C suffix air. Means the capacitance of this. This is the air medium capacitance. Okay. C suffix L into C suffix air, which is equals to how much? Mu naught into epsilon naught. So mu naught into epsilon naught means mu naught is the air medium permeability. Epsilon naught is air medium permittivity. If you multiply these two you will get around uh, root of 1 by root over of mu naught into epsilon naught you will get as a speed of light in which the wave is propagating okay so this is the first condition then so lc is equals to lc l into c suffix air medium mu naught into epsilon naught next what is c c is the phase velocity or the velocity in the air medium now we are depending upon the air medium now it is in air medium in air medium, what will be the phase velocity? The phase velocity will be same as the speed of light. So here I have written small c is equals to phase velocity, which is equals to 1 by mu naught into epsilon naught. Now you can substitute this value here. 
and you can represent this L as 1 by C square into C air. So C is the speed of light whole square and C suffix air is the capacitance above the this particular line, above this strip line. Okay. So I have represented L, take this C air down, mu naught by epsilon naught is nothing but 1 by C square. So here I have substituted L is equals to this much over next once this L and C is found you can go for the characteristics impedance of a line because we know that characteristics impedance of a line depends upon root over of L by C as I have written Z naught is equals to root over of L by C just you have to simply substitute this L value here and you have to determine the relation so it is C square means it will come out 1 by C 1 by root over of C into C air ok so C air is also there and capacitance is also there these are the lumped parameter available in that medium and C suffix air is the above the metallic plate so here we have identified the C suffix air capacitance Q divided by V naught the charge which is distributed above the metallic plate and when V naught is provided so that capacitance is the air capacitance we have considered and Z naught is equals to 1 by C small c 1 by root over of C into C air. So this is the characteristics impedance. Next you can go for the phase velocity. So phase velocity is 1 by root over of LC. You can substitute the value of L because here it is mu naught into epsilon naught need to be represented in LC. So LC is equals to how much? It is in place of L you have to substitute this value. If you are substituting, it is small c root over of c suffix air divided by capital C. Okay. So c suffix air is above the metallic plate. C is the capacitance of this particular medium. Above plate, lower plate and the dielectric medium. Now, relative effective permittivity, how to determine? Now, relative permittivity is basically identified with respect to velocity. Because as we know, the velocity c is equals to 1 by root over of mu naught into epsilon naught okay if it is air medium but if it is not in air medium the velocity c divided by epsilon r we can write but since here there are different mediums are there we have to represent this epsilon r as relative effective permittivity so it is an effective dielectric constant so it is a relative effective dielectric constant so here i have written root over of epsilon re is equals to c by vp or you can write epsilon suffix re is equals to c divided by c air c is the total capacitance divided by the capacitance of the air medium so this relation plays a vital role to identify the relative effective permittivity of the whole medium how we are identifying okay now simple example is that if C is equals to epsilon naught A by D, that means it is air medium. So here I can write C air. Then, but if this epsilon naught is not epsilon naught, rather than it is epsilon naught into epsilon reflective index. So it is C is equals to epsilon naught into epsilon RE into A by D. Okay. So C is the total capacitance. If you take this epsilon naught into A by D as C suffix air, that means what will be my epsilon RE? C divided by C suffix A. Same thing I have written here. Okay. So it is, uh, it is a relative effective permittivity of a medium. So once this is known, then you have to identify its value. Always remember that, that relative effective permittivity lies between 1 means air medium to the reflective to the permittivity of the dielectric substrate. So your relative must lies between air medium and the dielectric substrate. So here I have written 1 less than epsilon suffix Re less than epsilon R. Epsilon R is the dielectric substrate which is greater than relative effective permittivity and also greater than air medium. So this is the condition for our relative effective permittivity. Now once this is known, you can determine the other parameters of a transmission line. What are the parameters? Wavelength, phase constant, then your phase velocity and the electrical displacement. These are the fundamental components of a wave which is propagating through a particular line. So 
in this micro strip line when the weights are going to deliver then it must depend upon this sort of parameter what are the parameter first guided wave length because it is wave guide there are two wave guides are there upper conductor lower conductor and dielectric substrate wave guides okay so here lambda g i have written it is called as a guided wave length initially the wave length is compared with respect to air medium now for example for air medium it is c by f like this for air medium the whatever the wave length we are transmitting in air medium is c by f if you change the velocity uh, value of f wave length will change but this c is equals to 1 by root over of mu not into epsilon not into f okay but now if you change this permittivity value with epsilon uh, suffix re your wavelength is also going to change and that wavelength is called as the guided wavelength so that is lambda g is equals to lambda not lambda not is c by f okay if you change this value epsilon not as epsilon re then the rest of the parameter will become as lambda not and divided by lambda not divided by root over of epsilon suffix re so that i have written okay so this is the guided wavelength first second you can determine the propagation constant propagation constant we have relation beta is equals to 2 pi by lambda so now it is a wave guide so your lambda will become as a lambda g so here it is 2 pi by lambda g so beta is equals to 2 pi by lambda g next phase velocity so phase velocity how we are calculating omega by beta or from this particular relation also you can determine so omega by beta or c divided by root over of epsilon suffix re so this is the phase velocity now once this phase velocity is known you can determine the electrical displacement electrical displacement means what it is a product of phase constant into the length of the line so here this theta is equals to beta l is called as electrical displacement okay so these are the basic features of the micro strip line which satisfy the property of transmission line but it in the quasi tem mode okay it will satisfy the property of tem but ho as a whole it is not propagating in a tem rather than it is a tem quasi mode okay and these are the simple derivation to determine the characteristic impedance and relative permittivity okay now these are the fundamental representation now depend upon the variation of this width and the height of the micro strip line this all values will change we will see how it varies there are the certain relation through which we can justify that within this particular width and within this particular height of the substrate and the ratio this w by h ratio will identify helps to identify the relative permittivity of this whole system and the characteristic impedance of this whole system because these are the two basic features for a micro strip line which is judged by this w by h ratio that we will see now so in order to determine the characteristic impedance let me check whether it is recording or not so in order to determine the characteristic impedance and the relative effective permittivity of this uh, micro strip line there is a method called indirect method now in indirect method basically we are considering one reference value with respect to the micro strip line and we are converting that value into micro strip line now how it is done let's see in this indirect method to determine the characteristic impedance we have to consider one strip line okay whose height is h substrate this is the substrate okay this is substrate with the permittivity value epsilon r and this is the 
small conductive plate whose width is small w, thickness is small t, and wire over the ground. Wire over the ground. Now we will convert this parameter into the rectangular waveguide. Okay? How? Let's see. It is a cylindrical one. We have to convert into a rectangular system because microstrip lines are rectangular in nature, in which TEM mode is there, quasi TEM mode. But this circular means TEM will exist. So let us consider single conductor, which is a circular in nature, whose diameter is small d, and it is placed at a height of h from the ground level. So this is the ground level, and this is the conductor. We will convert this parameter into this. How? Let's see. For this. Now our this characteristic impedance must be depend upon must depend upon certain function. What is the function? The function is width of the strip line, thickness of the strip line, height of the substrate, and the width of the substrate. Means this W here I have capital W. It is a small W. It is capital W of a particular device. Okay. Similarly, in this particular so cylindrical line in which it is spaced at a height of h it is also depend upon ground plane diameter of this conductor height of the conductor placed above the ground level and the distance between them so distance between them is h and the dielectric medium epsilon r similarly here epsilon r is available here the same height is available and the only the difference is metallic plate is having its own dimension and this cylindrical wire is having its own dimension we need to convert it okay how let's see so z not for the wire over ground first we have to determine what is this z not for characteristic impedance for this particular line which is spaced above the ground plane okay now the fundamental representation or the fundamental equation for that ground is given as Z naught is equals to 60 divided by epsilon r log of 4 h by d, where h is very very greater than d because this height above the ground of that conductor is very very greater than with respect to the diameter of this conductor. Now this is the characteristic impedance for this particular line. Now once if you convert this dimension of a cylindrical system to a rectangular system it is very much easy to determine the characteristic impedance for the transmission line that we are going to do now second step is this is the first step okay this is step 1 identification of this characteristic impedance we are going to convert this characteristic value with respect to microstrip line only changing the dimension okay next step 2 in this as i have told we need to transform the rectangular system to the cylindrical system or vice versa you can do so here transformation of a rectangular conductor to equivalent circular conductor so equivalent circular conductor if we are going to cylindrical system to conductor say, means a rectangular system to cylindrical system the dimension d this d is going to be represented in terms of w and t of a rectangular system and the height of the rectangular system height remain as it is epsilon r is also same but the difference is what you need to form a relation between d and this w and t so if you convert or if you represent this d in terms of w and t that when you can substitute in this above equation and you can determine the characteristic impedance for this microstrip line so the relation is d is equals to 0.67 into small w whole into 0.8 plus t dft by w indicates the conversion of the rectangular system to cylindrical system so if these parameters are known or with the help of this parameter you can determine this w and t also if the width is known if the d is known you can easily determine the thickness so these are the standard representation okay these are the standard representation through which we can convert the rectangular system to a cylindrical system if the dimensions are given rectangular system dimension is w and t and cylindrical dimension system is d is the diameter of that conductor so it is a conversion or you can say it is a transformation of rectangular system to the cylindrical system
okay but the condition is what the height must be same and the substrate must be same then only this particular equation will satisfy and one more thing this t by w must lies between point 1 to point 8 so this is the one condition okay this must be one condition if not increase the value above point 8 must not decrease the value less than point 1 okay so these are the fundamental points through which we can derive the characteristics impedance for the microstrip line now we are going to substitute this value so z naught for the microstrip line so we can use 60 divided by epsilon r ln of 4h by d okay so this equation i have used here and i am going to substitute the value of d over here so here i will substitute 60 divided by epsilon r ln of 4 into h and d is 0.67 w 0.8 plus t by w <coughs> sorry so this is the relation now if you are identifying this epsilon r value that is called relative permittivity it is having a certain value that is called if you solve this you will get around 67 root over of epsilon r plus 1.41 ln of 5.98h divided by point w 8 plus t so this will be the characteristics impedance for microstrip line it is 87 divided by root over of epsilon r 1.41 whole into ln 5.98 h divided by 0.8 w plus t and the condition is h must be very very less than 0.8 w so this is the condition so this is the characteristics impedance for microstrip line which is converted from the cylindrical system to the rectangular system using the dimension condition okay the dimension condition is what the diameter of this conductor is equals to 0.67 times of w pole into 0.8 plus t by w and this t by w ratio must lies between 0.1 to 0.8 and this is the characteristics impedance if you solve it this uh, epsilon r value it is having certain uh, derivation which is not required directly you can substitute the value as 87 divided by epsilon r plus 1.4 this epsilon r e you can write okay relative permittivity so epsilon r e is equals to epsilon r plus 1.41 so this is the dielectric value which we are going to substitute here to determine the characteristics impedance for microstrip line so this is the characteristics impedance for microstrip line now Now the question comes, if the height, if it is greater than width, what will happen? Okay? Or you can say, h is very very less than 0.8 times of w. So in this case, the phase velocity is root over of epsilon naught re. So that I can write as 3 into 10 to the power 8 and this re I am going to substitute epsilon plus 1.41. So this is your velocity. Next, if or for W is very very greater than H. This W means capital W. Width, sorry, if the small W means width of the metallic plate. This is the width of the metallic plate if it is greater than the thickness. This is the height and this is the width of the metallic plate if this condition appear then what will happen if it is very very if the width is very very greater than here it is uh, we have seen w is greater than point or 10 by 8 times of h or here i can write if w is very very greater than h then we can say it is called for wider strip line okay these are the small small condition through which 
so z not is equals to h by w root over of mu by epsilon or this we can write 377 divided by epsilon r whole into h by w okay and this epsilon r indicates it is a relative effective permittivity so this is z not is equals to h by w root over of mu epsilon where mu and epsilon are going to change with respect to the variation of medium if it is a wider strip is there then no need to go for this relation directly you can go for this relation the dimensions will be given in the question you have to check whether your h by w by h here you can see if i will take h down it is very very greater than 1 okay very very greater than 1 if it is very very greater than 1 then directly you can use the characteristic impedance as h by w root over of mu epsilon and if it is w by h is greater than 0.8 like this here it is h is very very less than 0.8 times of uh, w means 0.8 is very very less than w by h like this you can write or w by h is greater than 0.8 not 1 if it is greater than 1 then you can use directly this relation and if it is near about 0.8 you have to check whether your W by H ratio is near about 0.8 then go through this particular relation. These are the two basic relations. Okay, And these relations will vary with the help of this W by H ratio. This W by H ratio plays a vital role. It is called as aspect ratio for our microstrip transmission line. It will help to decide the characteristics impedance with respect to the variation of dielectric medium in which particular medium what will happen okay so this is the basic relations through which we can uh, proceed for the characteristics impedance for different cases if w by h ratio greater than one what will happen if it is less than one what will happen if it is equal to one what will happen as i am telling okay so these are the basic representation or basic uh, components through which we can identify the characteristics impedance for microstrip line and the relative permittivity of the medium. Even this W by H ratio, if it is changed, your relative effective permittivity is also going to change. If these things are changed, then your whole capacitance of a particular system is also going to change. Because there, if the permittivity is changed, capacitance definitely it will change. If the capacitance is changed, your potential drop or the charge component is also going to be identified. Okay. So, today we will discuss up to this. Next class, um, in more detail, we are going to discuss all these parameters in a very brief manner. What is the variations and all. I am preparing this video in a short duration. So, uh, next class, the whole descriptions and all we are going to discuss. And what are the variations are there, how it will vary and how this characteristics impedance and relative permittivity plays a vital role for a micro strip line that we will see and then we will discuss about the strip line then coplanar line and other lines okay so for the time being we will end up here so next class we will discuss the rest part of this uh, strip line thank you all